Hello guys and welcome to a new Stone Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 4 of a best of 5 between Presta John and Pixie in the third place final in season 3 of the Steel Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Cell and both players have decided to play on the allied side. So on our left in the red team we have Presta John using the third US armoured and the Maverick deployment type. And on our right in the blue side we have Pixie using the third US armoured and the flatline deployment type. So a complete mirror match today. I know you guys aren't particularly a fan of these kinds of matchups but this is going to be quite interesting because it's going to come down to play style more than anything especially with the difference in deployment types. So I'm very very curious to see uh, who comes out on top. We of course have two games in favour of Pixie, one in favour of Presta John. So Pixie only needs to win one more and he takes the best of five series and takes the third place. Presta John's got some work to do, still wants to win this game very badly so will be as competitive as ever. So third armoured, what's it good for? It has a lot of armour of course but it also has uh, some decent uh, mechanised artillery which can be really really useful. Um, there's also access to plenty of off-map and some reasonably okay aircraft, uh, but that's not something they really focus on. Uh, so I don't expect to see too much air fighting going on. It's going to be very much ground brawling and very much reliant, I think, on the jumbos and who can make the most out of them. Now, Prestige on with the Maverick deployment type, this is actually quite common with the third armoured because it allows you to get all of the jumbos out in phase b you bring one card in phase a and then one card in phase b and then you have six jumbos on the field by the end of phase b and you use that to push really hard um, so if pressure john can make that work that could be something that overwhelms pixie because pixie's relying on the flatline deployment type and won't have that income in phase b to match him so that's the advantage that Preston john has if this goes into the long game then pixie will start to have a chance to come back so let's have a look at the units going down because it's going to be important to see where they are putting their units this is also going to be quite important in the grand scheme of things uh, the initial deployment so flamethrowers on the top side here four of them two engineers and a bazooka Further down, M8 and a 50 cal. Looks like Preston John's focusing more on the bottom though. Two flamethrowers here. It's got two armoured rifles with the BARs. Three sets of engineers. Two greyhounds leading the charge. Two M1 guns at the start. And an artillery uh, leader there. Also see the M8, bazooka and M1 gun on the bottom side. Very weak start on the bottom side of the map for Preston John. The, the extreme bottom anyway. It looks like Preston John's more focused on taking the hill. For Pixie, he's got flamers moving in, quite a lot of flamers. He's got, I believe, five flamers there, probably going to different locations, well, six in total. M1 gun, and then multiple units of armoured rifles. That's six units of armoured rifles with an M3A1 off map. Two flamers heading towards the centre with an M8 to cover. Four armoured rifles heading up to the uh, bottom side of this top hill. Flamer leading the charge with the M8. M8 leading the charge on the top side with two armoured rifles behind that. And we see one of the flamethrowers already unload. Didn't manage to catch out one of the flamers of Presta John before they unload. So that's going to be a two on one and I presume Pixie will lose that. Engineers are looking to take out the flamers here. Looks like one of the flamer trucks... Oh no, he unloaded early with one of them, that's why. I thought it might have gone down. Anyway, the armoured rifle is trying to get rid of the flamers before they get too close. This armoured rifle is trying to move up onto the hill. Very risky, is going to lose a unit of infantry before it unloads. These two moving into the trees here. There's no infantry support for Presta John uh, with this M1 gun in the bazooka. He's going to be, have to be careful of where he uses those M1 guns unloading. They're going to hit and kill one of the half-tracks, but infantry is unloaded there, so that's not too much of an issue. Looks like the M8 on the hill managed to kill the opposing M8. Uh, Pixie's M8 went down. Presta John's has one uh, which means it is going to have free fire on these half tracks this flamethrower can try and provide smoke to cover those uh, but we'll have to wait and see first off map strike is coming down from pixie uh, looks like this m3 half track is going to go down to the m8 so removing the mechanized units that pixie has to push up 
armored rifles uh, briefly getting some shots onto the bazooka but no damage done there this is going to be important engagement to watch out for there is an m4a6 coming in on the top side and also uh, a, an engagement here between the flamethrowers and the armored rifles looks like uh, pixie tried to go for a push got a bit greedy up there got caught out by those flamers so the off maps come down but both the half tracks have died so there's nothing really reliable to surrender these units once they get pinned down and it looks like these flamethrowers are going to be discovered they're coming under fire from the engineers there and the half tracks are also engaging half track and m8s hitting these armored rifles and if the armored rifles can't get into bazooka range they're not going to do too well another off map coming down in the same place for pixie i'm not sure if putting it in the same place twice is ever really a good idea for off map but Pixie did find some big salients on the bottom and mid early on, but that's mainly due to his troop placement as opposed to his local superiority. Because uh, this armoured rifle is going to go down. It uh, looks like Prester John's bringing in more infantry anyway to cover this off. Uh, so he'll be gaining back those flags. Same deal in the centre. Armoured rifles coming in to cover off against the flamers. And one of the armoured rifles did make it out on the top side, but that is, there is quite a large amount of troops... Uh, coming up here. The other difference that I need to mention is that a lot of the armoured rifles of Pixie actually came in M3 half tracks, whilst Presser John has brought them in M3A1 half tracks. And the big difference between those is the M3A1s have 50 cows, whilst the standard M3 half tracks do not. And therefore, the M3A1 can pin and force back the M3 half track. So in those in those half track on half track engagements, you can see these half tracks are actually ending up killing the enemy half tracks which allows Prester John's infantry on this top side to press onto the armored rifles putting Pixie under a lot of pressure. These two M1 guns unloading on this hill has been a problem for Pixie. They're going to take out one of the half tracks there. Jumbo has been brought in on the side of Pixie. The second one goes down. That's two units of infantry dead very quickly. Nicely done. Engineers unload here. Armoured rifles take out the half track, but looks like that armoured rifle unit should go down shortly if the engineers can get on target. Further up, we see the armoured rifles. Oh, they tried to bazooka the M4A1, but they actually missed. That is unfortunate for Presser John. That would have been a lovely kill, giving him a nice, nice room to breathe on the top side there now that that replacement tank came in. Uh, these M1 guns still firing at the jumbo. I guess trying to make that fall back eventually, but the last off map, off map strike from this M3A1 is going to be coming down shortly. Things have very quickly gone into the favour of Prester John here as he moves forwards his half tracks uh, to capture these flags, but the armoured rifles arriving in these half tracks should be able to help clean things up. This jumbo will probably want to move out of position. Flamethrower crew moving in to maybe engage the engineers, but engineers. They get the HE onto this building. Those armored rifles are in trouble. These ones are in trouble because it's a heavy engagement, heavy cover engagement versus light cover. And also the M3A1 50 cal is helping out quite a bit. So it's very much on these armored rifles in the town to hold back the engineers here for as long as possible. Pixie's also brought in an M4A1 uh, to help out. But Presser John's bringing in his own M41. His is at two star veterancy by default. So armoured rifles have been unloading, this one taking out two of the enemy half tracks, uh, this one moving in to kill another most likely. I think this M8 can also see that one so might start shooting it from up there. Jumbo ended up falling back on the bottom side. Further up, armoured rifles taking on the flamethrower. The flamethrower has done quite a lot of damage to this squad. Now the flamethrower is going to go down but that is a sizable chunk done there. Oh, P-51 coming in. I believe those get two 150 kilogram bombs. He's used that to swing the M4A1 engagement in his favor. And it works a treat. Presta John takes the kill there. Bazooka's going to engage the M8 on the top side. Take that out. All of these units that Pixie's throwing in are dying very, very quickly. The off map goes down. The off-map had already used all of its strikes, of course, uh, but uh, does get picked off by the M1 guns eventually. 
P51's trying to strafe the flamethrower, but P51's aren't actually terribly good at strafing. They only tend to tickle their enemies. Uh, Bazooka's going to clean up that half track, and that puts this M4A1 in a very precarious position. M8 following up M4A1. There's no infantry there to support. Another M4A1 uh, moving up onto the hill as well. I fear that uh, Pixie has used up most of his, his uh, infantry already in phase A and is going to have to wait to phase B to reinforce because most likely we'd already see infantry coming into this top side if that wasn't the case. Another M4A 176 coming in on the bottom side for example. So I think he's lacking infantry in the early phases but it makes sense if he's going for more of a flatline play style where Presser John probably has three cards of infantry in phase A, um, Pixie probably only has two. Because the third armoured is very limited on the number of cards you can bring in the infantry tab. Both of these AT guns have now gone down though. I think the Jumbo was just tanking them and then the M4A1 came in to help out. Also the M8 up on the ridge there. Uh, after the off map fell, kept them all pinned down and cleaned up. Engineers and armoured rifles still in this pocket, but with the M8 and half tracks moving round, uh, that has caused them to get cut off. Another M4A1, we've got a jumbo on the top side, M4A1. Both is coming in as well. Of course, Presser John has shown his hand with the P51, and therefore um, looks like Pixie's going to be investing in AA. And AA is something that the third armor do relatively well. So, a Bofors, good choice just to stop the Mustangs from being a problem. Neutralize any air investment that Prestadon has done so far. This MA is getting really, really far up. Uh, we'll actually give information onto the spawn roads, but I guess it can get taken out by these armor at a distance quite easily. Half track moving up, going to be capturing one flag. Jumbo is on its way. I'm surprised to see Pixie bringing out the Jumbos before Presta John. In phase A, he does have more income technically, so that makes sense. But I think it mainly comes down to the fact that Pixie has run out of infantry in phase A. <laughs> that looks apparent anyway. A bazooka team here moving up. That is very sneaky. You could easily pick off a jumbo or similar as it comes down this road. So what looked like a really strong start for Presser John has certainly died down now. Both players not really continuing uh, their aggression. Bazooka takes out the Greyhound further up. There's lots of bazookas all over the place for Presser John and these have actually done pretty well so far. So half track here actually going to end up surrounding this engineer. Uh, Jumbo, however, on its way down uh, will eventually allow him to clean that up. The M1 gun here is put on return fire. Nicely done. Pixie can no way penetrate the front armor of a Jumbo at this range. So what he's going to do is he's going to wait for that to get closer or show its side armor, then fire that M1 gun so that he can reliably get the kill. M4A1 taking shots at the M4A1 in the trees here. The M4A1 176 should win that battle because of the extra penetration. Gives it that more reliable uh, penetration which allows it to apply its damage better. Jumbo engaging the half track. More engineers on the way now for Pixie. So yeah, you can see as soon as it moved into phase B, Pixie is just flooding in his engineers. He's got lots of two-star engineers, and that's by default, so interesting for sure. It's going to definitely trump Presta John's unvetted engineers. Oh, good kill by the M1 gun there. Kills a unit of infantry before it unloads. Almost catches a second. Jumbo takes out the M4A1. M1 gun now under threat. E51's coming in for the strafing runs, but not too much going to happen there. These engineers moving up with M3 half tracks again. I'm surprised to see the engineers that came in half tracks in M3 half tracks as opposed to the M3A1 half tracks with 50 cows because having the two star veterancy on the 50 cow is actually really useful in a lot of ways. 
And that both is doing its best to scare off the P-51. And send one gun in the bottom side though is struggling. I think the M4A1 also struggles at this range against the Jumbo. I'm not entirely sure why he's taking that engagement. The M4A1 could go down there. Armoured Rifles engaging the Artillery Command. The Artillery should win. They do have the better mid-short range engagement. The M1 Carbines, they only have 300 meter range. They're actually pretty good at close range, like the extreme close range. M4A1 does back off down here and it looks like it's just a pure jumbo engagement now. Expect to see a reasonable amount of that throughout the game. Engineers moving up again. Looks like one engineer, or maybe two engineers moved up and both of them got taken out. The armored rifles does, must have hammered them whilst they were moving across the open from the heavy cover. M3A1 trying to help pin down some of these engineers. I'm surprised to see these two-star engineers not doing so well against these infantry units. In cover, it might help out a lot, especially in the trade, because the engineers will get pinned down less because they have the veterancy. This jumbo is now shooter knocked. The M4A1's moving up to take a hit. Uh, M4 does clean out the M8. And the M8 Recon now no longer available for press to John. Dumbo here. Going to be hitting those armoured rifles. I believe the way the 50, P51 should be used is to weaken your opponent's jumbos. That seems like probably the best way to do things. And now this jumbo is not firing at his M4A 176. Pixie can quite happily have that whaling on the front armour of the jumbo. The reason you do that is so you can fully pin it. Then as it's retreating, it might accidentally show side armor, and then you can get the kill. If the Jumbo starts focusing on the M4A1 though, an M4A176 is going to have to be very careful. Second Jumbo coming in for Presto John now, that's heading towards the center. Uh, more infantry reinforcement for Pixie on the top. So, four M3 half-tracks now, providing fire onto these armored rifles, and you can see just how much less effective the 30 cal is than the 50 cal on those half tracks. Those armored rifles taking absolutely no damage or suppression. Really not good. Armored rifles in cover versus armored rifles in the open. They are outnumbered. So the armored rifles in cover should lose that engagement, but we'll take a lot of men with them. Engineers down here are in the open. They're going to get hit very hard by these half tracks and can't really do too much to save themselves. They did manage to lob a TNT at the half track, but that hasn't seemed to do the job. They're probably going to lose those. Now we've got artillery command uh, versus armored rifles. Because the artillery leader has two submachine guns, it might actually win that engagement. Yeah, you can see that even though the armored rifles had more at the start of that, uh, they are getting chewed up quite badly. And another Jumbo versus M4A176 engagement. Those are important to look out for. Looks like the P51 did start bombing the Jumbo, which is good. And now we see the uh, B26 coming in with its bombs as well. I'm not sure what entirely where that actually went for the bombing strike. The Pixies managed to take back some ground into that town at least. P51... It's in position to shoot that down. Nice micro there from Presser John. Made it turn tightly so that he could get the kill, but not going to be a kill. B26B gets away with it. Nicely done, Pixie. I'm not sure if that was luck or anything, but he got the job done. Uh, this Sherman in, dies in a tough spot quite far up. These half tracks are actually in a weird position. Ooh, scary. The jumbo there almost took a side shot from the M4A2. M4A1, sorry. The M4A3 jumbo is engaging the M4A1 of Presser John on this bottom side. So the jumbo is in this position really, really good. They can clean up medium armor very well because they have the penetration to get through medium armor at this sort of range whilst not being able to be penetrated themselves. M4A1s, however, they do have more penetration but do suffer still against jumbos. So. The M4A1 isn't really the best choice in this matchup, and we've seen Pixie bring them in so far, 
and they haven't really done too well. The one on the top side's already died. One on the bottom side will likely die if the Jumbo Focus it. As two M4A 176s though coming in for Preston John. And the M4A 176 is by no means a bad unit. It's just not very good in this matchup, I don't think. Is that a Jumbo got surrendered there? Preston John's, or oh, sorry, Pixie's Jumbo goes down to a surrender of Preston John. Another B26B coming in for the bombing strike. That's going to be another surrendered jumbo, but this time on the side of Preston John, he's going to lose one on this bottom side. If the half track comes back, it doesn't need to. That B26 is absolutely annihilating it. Wow, that was a hell of a bombing strike. So Pixie taking the advantage in the bottom. Preston John taking the advantage in the top. And Preston John sitting on the 13 to 11. Does have a lot of troops on the field. I think the reason it looks like so many is because of the half tracks mainly. And Preston John hasn't been pushing his half tracks as aggressively as Pixie has. The Pixie's kind of been throwing them in to make sure he can hold as many flags for as long as possible. For example, on this bottom side, you can see he's moved it all the way up. Whereas Preston John is kind of holding the M3A1s close to his chest and using them more as infantry fire support, which I think I prefer. Uh, but Preston John does often lack a little bit of aggression, so maybe that's coming into play as well. Nice bombing strike does do some serious damage to these engineers. No nothing that the M4A3A1 3 can't clean up. And now the P51's looking for the kill onto the B26B, but that's going to get out of there. So the two M4A1s, lucky these aren't armoured rifles. The M4A176s should be able to engage their Jumbo versus M4A1 on the ridge. Oh, nice kill there from the M4A176. Takes out an enemy M4. Half track finally goes down to the bottom side. Preston John's now relying on the M4A375s. So Pixie briefly taking a lead, 13 to 11. We're almost at the end of phase B. So this is really important because Preston John's using Maverick. He should be gaining an advantage in this phase. Otherwise, it's not looking good for Preston John. Pixie will have the flatline income advantage in the late game. So Preston John's got to be really careful of that. M4A176 and M4A1, M4A3 do manage to clean up an enemy M4A3. Basically a mirror match engagement there between those tanks. Oh, Pixie's tank takes out one of Preston John's. Really nicely done. This Jumbo still firing away. It's actually ran out of AP shells. Not the worst thing because the Jumbo could probably kill an enemy tank eventually with HE anyway. Just because it's going to be engaged in combat for such a long time, that is feasible. AT gun does go down to the M4A3. That was just uh, Pixie not paying attention there. On the top, P51 coming in. Going for the kill onto the M1 gun. Does find it. Good kill. Rester John actually getting some work done with these P51s. Really like that a lot. Both is now firing at the P-51, is going to reveal its location. M3A1 now going to be the one under fire. The Preston John sitting on a 17-7. He has a huge lead now. Just needs to maintain it before Pixie can come back. M4A376 though, going to go down to the M1 gun on the bottom side. Uh, this M4A1 is doing so much work. Can it get the second shot in here? It can, so they trade M3, M4A3 of M4A176. So they take it down the 76 is actually pretty important. So uh, Preston John's not too sad about that, other than the fact it's already killed one of his tanks before. M4A1 engaging the Jumbo in the M4A3 at range. This is the big thing that Jumbos are really annoying for. Jumbos, they absorb shots. And they make it so whenever you do like an attack move with your own armor, you always end up stopping and firing at a jumbo when sometimes you just want to ignore them. 
and that can be really really frustrating and it ends up making you get stuck in positions like this where your tanks can never penetrate but the jumbo is just going to wail on you till it does and so the m4a176 goes down in the mid b26b now arriving on the bottom side though looking for the four 450 kilogram bombs onto uh, the enemy jumbo which might allow uh, the next penetrating hit to get the kill or a second bombing strike later on New Star Engineers trying to have a go at these rifles. They are actually doing a decent job. The Engineers sitting in heavy cover, whilst the armoured rifles in light and medium cover. Makes a big, big difference in engagements like this, where you have similar weapons. And the bombing strike didn't quite get the kill. Uh, did do maybe some damage, although it doesn't look like it was very much on target. B-51 overshoots the B-26. Pixie's going to be having that purposefully go around in circles so the P-51 can't get on target. Uh, but it looks like another salient here for Pixie, pushing all the way into the back line of Brester John. I always find that Cell just looks so messy on the front line. Uh, mainly because it's so easy to cover your pushes into different areas that they don't sort of cross each other so on some maps you have like large open ground where if you take the say the hill here and you fought at close range you could then cover the open ground from that hill you just gained therefore half of the map is actually dealt with by just taking one objective whereas in a map like this the forests kind of cover any movement of units and so it actually makes it very difficult to stop your opponent from pushing uh, like next door to one flag um, even though you're doing successful you know only a few like a few meters down for example or I guess kilometers down in this in this case um, the M4A3 there getting into a good position to engage the M4A1 but the M4A1 rightly going to back off from that doesn't have the penetration to get through that jumbo nice position for Presser John on this hill with the Jumbo and the m 4 one does allow him to hit quite a lot of reinforcements and I believe Pixie has been struggling a lot to, uh, due to him losing infantry before it's unloaded. So he's definitely made it hard for himself by not securing the hill early on and he's still struggling to do so. However, with the lack of infantry uh, behind these tanks, the armoured rifles here might be able to nip up and basically get the kills with the bazooka that's what he's going to be looking for b26b coming in to swing this battle in favor of pixie's jumbo neither is going to be penetrating each other anytime soon so the b26b is looking to finish this off uh, this has been bombed slightly before but i don't think the bombs were accurate before this time around no kill but it is still falling back so maybe the jumbo can finish the job that jumbo now engaging the m4a176 instead Engineers lobbing TNT at the M3A1. Lands nowhere near. Ooh, MGs. Late game MGs for Pixie. Uh, maybe this is to make up for late game infantry availability in the infantry tab. But yeah, we got to remember that now we're six minutes into phase C. The income that Prestigeon had is going to be like less of an advantage now. Oh, P51 bomber gets the kill. Uh, we already mentioned how these P-51s have been doing work for Presser John and it, they continue to do so. This one's even going to get on the back of Pixies. we got the Mustang engagement. Oh, nice micro. Nice micro from Pixie there. Scissors the enemy P-51 away. Now they're going to be going in for that head-on. And neither's really going to come out on top of that engagement. So one of these armoured rifles is going to want to unload and clean up that half track so the second unit of armoured rifles can carry on without having to worry. Although the bazooka actually missed. Oh no. That's not good. Maybe the second bazooka can hit the mark? Oh, the second bazooka missed as well. That's not something you see very often. Either way, these armoured rifles did manage to take out the... M4 on the hill, and they've also cleaned up the artillery leader. The jumbo was forced back. On the bottom side, Pixie's in a bit of trouble because he's lost a lot of his tanks here. 
Also, all of these half tracks just getting thrown away. Pixie's half tracks do cost a lot less than Presta John's. Like an extra five points left, which definitely adds up over time. But there's still half tracks that can help deal with infantry. So, in general, I think they're useful to keep alive. Regardless, M1 gun kills that M4A1 on the top side. Pixie is making ground up here. He's been slowly but surely moving forwards these armored rifles uh, to take some ground. He's now backing it up with three M4A3 75 mils. Uh, these are basically standard M4s but with the extra frontal armor. Whereas a standard M4 only has 90 mil uh, millimeters of frontal armor. On the bottom, I think Presta John. Could try and continue to make some serious ground here. Just needs to get some recon or something that can spot these armored rifles that are taking up positions in these buildings. But I think it's very unlikely for both of the third armored decks to have that much recon in them. And the only recon that we were ever likely to see was the Greyhounds. And I think both players had those. And now they're all used up. Both players are struggling to find uh, where opposing infantry is on this map because it's cell, there's a lot of forest and uh, it's very easy to hide them. Oh, nice kills here. I believe that was a half track with infantry in maybe. Uh, but these armored rifles again in light cover whilst the armored rifles with the BAR in heavy cover makes a huge difference. Uh, so those should lose to the armored rifles there. Uh, whilst Pixie can overwhelm this M4A1 with a superior M4. The M1 gun almost went down to the 30 cows further up. On the bottom though, these armored rifles are surrounded. The engineers are surrounded. That's a 14 to 10 for Presta John. He is very close to being able to secure this game. But engineers cleaning up more armored rifles in the center. That's going to creep this front line together. Maybe allow these engineers to recover. Pixie knows it. He's moving back in that direction. These rifles, they do have a bazooka available. So can deal with the M3A1 if it gets too close. Is that on an attack move order? It is. So if the M301 shows itself to the armored rifles, the armored rifles are going to stop and shoot. That is going to mean that the armored rifles don't have bazooka to kill the jumbo. Uh, but there is another unit further back that might be able to do the job. This armored rifle taking out another half track there. Uh, currently, Presta John's half tracks have now started to play a bit more aggressively. And that is going to make quite a bit of a difference. Oh, the armored rifle there. I thought it was targeting the half track. Actually ended up hitting the tank. Nice kill indeed. Oh, and a lovely kill for the M4A1. Takes out the M4A3 on the top side, showing its superiority. Looks like the infantry traded previously. This is... Well, I don't know. <laughs> is it close? <laughs> it's hard to tell. Prester John should have... Well, does have a big lead and has done very well, but... I think Pixie's just being so annoying with his infantry micro. Both players actually doing really, really well with their micro in this game. He's managing to control all of the units all over the place. It's, I'm finding it hard to keep up. This armored rifle going to be looking for maybe the second shot, but not quite in range. And for a one takes that out. Another flag in favor of Presta John, but he's losing flags elsewhere. So he's lost the flag here. Salient from the three engineers. Lost the flag eventually on the hill. Uh, we've got the M4A3, M4A176 and the M4A3 Jumbo on this bottom side versus M4A1 and M4A3. See who can, I guess, but get better RNG in a lot of ways. Bombing strike comes in, wipes out some infantry. The use of the B26s from Pixie has done well so far. Definitely helped him deal with jumbos and also infantry there. Uh, these engineers, it looks like the engineers managed to throw a HE shell without being revealed because there's no recon that the M4A3 can't actually see them. Now this M4A3 actually ended up one-shotting the enemy M4A3 because the engineers had already damaged it with the TNT. That's quite significant. If you can find ways to damage these tanks before you engage them, that's one way that you can win the one-on-ones. Or M4A1 engaging very closely here with the jumbo, looking for that penetrating shot. I assume it's 
more likely looking for a side shot, but from that angle, not sure it's going to work out. B-51 maybe coming in for the bombing strike. Or oh, M4A1 hits the enemy A M4A1 who's going to fire first. Pixie gets it. Similar rate of fire. The M4A176 got the ambushing shot. Nicely done. M4 is now pushing through for Prester John. It looks like Prester John's really going aggressive in this. He really needs to finish it sooner than later. That's what he's trying to do. Bazooka's now creeping up on the M4A3. There is no support there. Pixie's now falling back from that. If he could see it, he'd be shooting it. So he's probably backing up from the M4A 176. But that doesn't push him out of position. Pixie, he's managed to get half tracks through on the bottom side. And the armored rifles again coming into position. M4A 176 goes down here. Jumbo's in trouble. Armored rifles approaching that from the light cover. This has been so back and forth. What a game this has been so far. Bazookas can certainly converge on the M4A3, but the rifles on the top side managed to kill uh, whatever was remaining here. I guess it was the M4. And yeah, multiple flags now going in favor of Pixie. 13 minutes until Pixie wins the game. But this time around, it looks like Pixie has uh, a serious amount of stuff on the field whilst uh, Prester John is lacking infantry. I think Prester John may be out of infantry. He's bringing in the artillery leader on the bottom side and that's kind of a sign that he's ran out of infantry and he's using that as frontline infantry. M1 gun coming in. We've got more half tracks arriving from Pixie with the 30 cows inside. It's funny how he keeps the 30 cows inside the half tracks because he knows that that's probably not the best place to unload them. Uh, it looks like this armored rifle actually failed to kill the jumbo on the bottom side, likely lost. It's a bazooka shot, or maybe got bombed. I think the jumbo just managed to deal with that in time. This M3 half track drove all the way through. M4A1 should clean it up. That's going to be a surrender there from the leader. Now 13 to 11. Bazooka's holding the top side. M4A1's holding the top side. If Pixie has. I guess a few more tanks up his sleeve. He can probably try and overwhelm each of these tanks. Doesn't really even need to. Could bring in um, bombers, the bombers he has. There hasn't really been much contention uh, in the sky uh, other than Prester John trying to use his uh, P-51 to shoot down Pixie's bombers, but to no avail. So the bombers are still available. Oh, nice bazooka kill though on the top side. These bazookas have been paying themselves off massively on both sides. Uh, more so for Pixie in the infantry squads. Uh, but of course for Prester John, he's he chose more to go for the two-man squads, which do have the stealth uh, to get these individual kills. So 30 cal now unloading. M3 half tracks able to engage that because it's actually out of ammunition. Those bazooka squads have six rockets. So <laughs> it's very surprising to see them all used for once. But lovely kill from the M1. Takes out uh, the unit on the hill here. There it is, the M4A176. And that M4A176 is going to go down to, to the M4A3. Rasta John's really losing ground. He's lucky here. Because M4A1 on the top side. Uh, nearly got killed by those armored rifles, but didn't have any bazooka shots left. And it looks like Prester John realizes he's doomed. Um, he doesn't have, I guess, any infantry left to continue the fight. He was all in phase A and B and almost, almost had it. There was three minutes left on the clock at one point for him to win the game. But I'm not really sure there's too much he could have done. Like, Prester John played that really well. Like in a mirror match, it's really difficult. So I think hats off really to both players in this one. Uh, finding ways around the jumbos on both sides was really, really impressive using the bombers, um, using like AT guns and just like constant firefights to weaken each other. Um, the TNT obviously helping with the tank kills, um, the infantry engagements. Um, obviously Pixie focused more on the armored rifles with the BAR. Uh, late game whilst uh, Prester John did that in the early game and so Pixie had the line infantry advantage in the late game 
which allowed him to hold on and obviously bring things back. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe Presta John could have pushed a little bit harder with his half tracks earlier on because we saw Pixie do that. And I think maybe Presta John started copying that style later in the game where he was like just rushing half tracks onto the flags, like maybe midway through, whereas Pixie was kind of doing it from the start, which definitely hampered Presta John's ability to get a sizable lead. Um, just little things like that in, in in the plays are really what it comes down to in, in matchups like this. And I think although you guys in the comments often complain about mirror matches, and in this case it's an actual mirror match, um, it actually shows the intricacies of the play styles of each player and how they played this game. So I actually really, really enjoy casting that. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this series because it was really, really good. Commiserations to Presta John did fantastically in the series. Um, I re like really enjoyed watching him play. Pixie, congratulations, takes the 3-1 in the best of five and will be taking third place in the Steel Division League Season 3. So yeah, fantastic stuff. I look forward to uh, more of this in Season 4. Um, I won't be covering much of Season 4. Um, most likely, again, the playoffs um, later in the season. Uh, but yeah, next up, of course, we have the final <laughs> between Karma and Gonzo. Oh, it's going to be a good one. All right. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. And that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.